Hi, I'm Kent. Now that I have Shapecast working, I have a great way to go and make one piece molds. It took a little while to get here, but it's a relatively robust system at this point, I think. So it lets me just sketch the profile and does all the modeling for me and spits out the 3D printed parts. Now that that is working, I've been thinking about ways to extend it. In particular, I've been thinking about getting beyond one piece molds. So here are the types of things we've been making recently. This is a one piece mold and the resulting pot. And we sketch the profile and all the 3D printed pieces are made. We then pour in the plaster and we can slip cast the pots. One of the defining characteristics is that they are one piece. And to be a one piece mold, we need a draft angle on our design. It may not look like it, but this is actually slightly towed in a little bit at the bottom, so the top is wider. And that means we can actually pull it out of the mold. If the top were narrower or any point in the middle were narrower, we'd wind up with an undercut and we wouldn't be able to pull it out. And that's directly reflected in the geometry of the mold itself. Here, the top, the plaster hole is wider, and at the bottom, it's narrower. That's needed so we can get our pot out, but even before that, it's needed so we can get our 3D printed mold out. The pots are maybe a little bit forgiving when they are slip cast in, but the 3D printed PLA is not. Before I started working on my software, I went ahead and was brushing up my skills on making just regular plaster molds, and I made a two piece plaster mold early on. In particular, I made these two molds, which made this pot here. You'll notice in this pot that the widest spot is actually in the middle. And then it tapers down at the bottom, much like our existing pots. So we have a nice draft angle on the bottom. However, it then also tapers in at the top, which means if we were to pour plaster around this, we'd never be able to get it out. The solution I used was to basically cut it in half. And that actually creates these two mold pieces here. So the bottom is just like the one piece molds we've been making. You could imagine pouring slip in this and pulling it back out, or likewise putting a master printed part in here and pulling it back out. This wasn't using my mold system, so it looks a little bit different, but the principle for the inner form is exactly the same. And so if we cut it and then turn it over, well, this piece here is actually somewhat similar as well. We have a nice draft angle, and here we also have a draft angle. So the middle part, which is now the side facing you, is the widest, and the narrowest part's the bottom. One of the key differences is, you'll notice there's a big hole in here, and that's because we need to be able to pour the slip in. So the idea is to take these two pieces together, stack them up, they register against each other. We can now pour our slip in, we have our slip well on the top. Once it sets, we can trim the top off, pull it apart, and then it will release from both halves just fine, either the top half first or the bottom half first, it doesn't really matter, but we have a good draft angle. We can then pull out a pot like this, fire it, and do all that. So what we've done basically is created two one-part molds and then stacked them up on top of each other. So our design can accommodate the draft angles on each half. So if we were to sketch this out, we have our bottom profile, say we have a foot, and I'm gonna go ahead and draw the whole thing around like that, and then there's this magic line in the middle where it's the widest, and then from there on, we have a draft angle the other way, like this. That's not symmetric, but that's why I draw things in the computer. So any design that's like this, we should be able to do in two pieces. So can we just make two one-part molds and stack them together? I think the answer is yes. It will require some more work for us when we're in clay. The mold's not doing all the work for us, but we should be able to create more complicated shapes by doing that. Let's go ahead and try that out and see how it works. So the simplest thing we can do is take two of our one-piece molds, make two pots, and then invert one of them and stack them on top of each other. So this is my bowl form, this is my tumbler form, actually have a couple of these, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and slip cast two of these and create a basically a tall vase. And that way I can slip cast them at the same time. Could potentially do them back to back and then you have to manage the water levels so that the pieces will adhere. So let me go ahead and get set up and we can go ahead and slip cast a couple pots and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So what exactly are we trying to accomplish here? Well, basically I want a form that is two of these stacked on top of each other. Have it be one piece and then obviously we'll need to open up one end here so we can put it in. Then we'll have this nice tall vase. Each half of that will basically be a one piece mold like we've been doing and somewhat similar to that small little tumbler, it will be joined in the middle. One will be inverted. Okay, I've got my slip all mixed up and I've got two copies of the same mold. So let's go ahead and slip cast these pots. There's the first one.
and there's the second. I'm gonna go ahead and let these sit longer than I normally would. I want a thicker wall since I'm gonna to have to join the clay together. Come back to this when it's time to pour the slip out. We should have a nice thick pot now, so let's go ahead and drain these. All right, we'll let these drain here on my DIY slip table. We should be ready to demold, so let's go ahead and trim them. I want to be careful because these will be the faces that wind up being joined together. All right, this can be reclaimed. Same for our other half. I used to palm these, but with the slip well kind of in the way, sometimes they drop in the form a little bit. So I cut out a little piece of cardboard and this has been working well. So it basically fits right down in there. Give it a little bit of shake, pull the mold off and grab a wear board. There's one. And the other. These are still really soft and normally I wouldn't handle them much, but I want to join them together while they're in this state. So I'll flip them over. And just to help them stick together, I'm going to score this side here a little bit. I can feel this one here is a little bit wetter than this one. So I'll make this one the bottom. So for best chances of getting this to stuck together, I'm also going to put some slip on here. I'm just going to cheat and dunk it a little bit. And there we go, we got slip on the edge. I don't think we need to do the other one. Go ahead and get these lined up. I think I'm trapping some air, so I'm going to poke a hole real quick. Go ahead and sponge off this extra slip. I think those are joined together. This top one here is really soft. It's trying to deform a little bit. So I'm going to let this firm up for a little while and then we'll come back and clean it up a little bit more. This has firmed up a little bit more. I went ahead and cut a small little axis hole in the top to help it ventilate. And before it dries out too much more, I wanna go ahead and cut this opening. Now I'm gonna take a sponge and clean this hole up a little bit. There we go, one brand new vase. That's actually kind of cool. I think maybe now you can see the taper a little bit more, or it's narrower here, fatter in the middle, and narrower at the top again. So I'll probably need a little bit more cleaning, but I'm gonna set that off to the side. Clearly this isn't really a two-part mold. We have two pieces and we just attach them together. However, this idea, you can go ahead and use the shape cast right now. And the top and bottom here are symmetrical. You don't actually need to do that. The only thing that really matters is the diameter needs to be the same. So if we go back to our molds, it's these faces here that are gonna mate. So you could actually go and design two different shapes as long as they're all one piece molds. And if they have the same diameter, you can use this trick and join them together. So the top and the bottom can be different shapes or sizes, whatever you want. However, joining together the clay is a little bit annoying. And part of the reason I do slip casting is for the molds to do the work for me. So I'd really like to get my molds to do this like the one I showed you at the beginning of this video. So can I stack two of these together? Well, not really. There's a couple of problems. One is there's no hole here, so I can't pour the slip in and back out. So it's a little two-part mold. It's the equivalent of this hole here. So we somehow need to put that in the top. And then the other thing is our slip well is getting in the way. So this is great when we're doing these one-piece molds. It gives us a nice shelf to be able to trim against. It gives us some extra headroom so that the slip has a place to shrink into. Somehow if we put a hole in the mold here so we can pour the slip in, we have the problem of the slip well itself getting in the way. However, that does point towards the changes we need to make to the molds in order to be able to do a two-piece mold like this. So I'm gonna start thinking about how to do that using Shapecast. And in the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, do let me know, thanks.